My name is Benjamin Shirovsky. I was a circumnavigator in 2011, and my research focused on uh, implementation strategies for sustainable development. I was sponsored by the Chicago chapter. I studied environmental engineering uh, through a bachelor's, master's combined program at Northwestern University. So I chose my topic because as an environmental engineer, I was learning a lot about environmental sustainability, um, had done some volunteer work in high school where I um, supported from afar, I didn't travel, but supported some uh, kind of like mechanical based water systems um, and was very interested in how different parts of the world were thinking about um, what sustainability really means and kind of defining it and um, you know, how it's a term that was growing in popularity at the time and probably has, has only grown since, um, but was, uh, it meant a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, so I just wanted to kind of try and find a, a common framework for myself and for others that they could use. The interview process was um, really interesting. I, in a unique way, um, found out about the circumnavigation, uh, circumnavigators uh, foundation scholar program with two, maybe three weeks left to apply. Um, so I, I had a shortened application process that I probably would not re recommend for others, um, but it really kind of helped me learn how to really iron out my thinking quickly, really kind of helped me figure out what was important and move that forward. And weirdly, I still do a ton of project development, and that's like the field I work in now. Um, and, you know, in that work, I often have to, you know, come up with project concepts quickly, do things quickly, kind of pull those pieces together. Um, so, you know, that could trace back to some of that work, um, you know, in applying for the circumnavigators. I chose Ecuador um, because there was some really interesting kind of community development based work going on. Um, so my, with my circumnavigator, I tried to one of the core questions at the beginning was what the diff, like balancing the differences in how developed and developing countries viewed sustainable development and we're doing that work. So I wanted to have a good mix of both types of uh, communities. And um, with Ecuador, it was an opportunity to see what a really small kind of grassroots effort can be for sustainable development. It was focused on kind of sustainable livelihoods around coffee production um, and some other kind of very small scale industry development work and, and conservation work. So it was an opportunity to work with kind of a really local scale project. Within Ecuador, I had a great experience. Um, so I got to travel to it. So I was working with an NGO that was based out of Quito um, and I got to work with um, some I, I got to work with a nonprofit that was working in, in smaller communities along the shore um, and along the coast. And one of my favorite memories was just the opportunity to do kind of like a homestay of sorts in one of those smaller towns for a few days and learn from folks there and, and get to know what they were doing around some of the coffee production work um, and some of the kind of like seafood production work that they were doing there. Um, so it was an opportunity to really kind of like be in the field um, and, and kind of get that experience. I chose Ghana and, and the ecological uh, farming program that I, I worked with there because I, that was actually the program that I had supported while I was in high school um, that really got me interested in sustainability in general. So they were doing some really great, like kind of water irrigation projects at the time. And I helped raise some money for them to support their operations. And it was kind of my first entree to that sort of work. And to me, it was um, very interesting. And it was 
So I actually got the opportunity then when I was thinking about what to do for my circumnavigator to reach out to them and say, hey, I'd love to come, you know, see what you guys are doing in the field and experience that. So it was kind of full circle for me in terms of an opportunity to see something that I had, you know, already invested time and energy into and seeing what the outcomes were on the ground. I chose England as one of my stops because um, there was a very, so in sustainability, a lot of work has gone into kind of redesigning buildings, redesigning how we live in a community and thinking about that. And I had the opportunity to work or, or go and visit a, um, primarily a lot of what I was doing there was I was working on a uh, intentional housing community that was designed to be completely sustainable, um, had a number of different um, like airflow systems and renewable energy and, and passive heating and cool, like all sorts of kind of innovative designs. You know, it was 10 years ago at this point. So they're a little more common for people today, but at the time these are, you know, few and far between that people were thinking about design in this way. And it was an opportunity to kind of see how a developed country was thinking about transitioning existing infrastructure into something that was more sustainable. I was in Denmark. Um, I, I actually spent most of my time on a small island called Samso. Um, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong as it's spelled with all sorts of, you know, dashes and uh, crosses. Um, and there was an energy academy there on this island um, that had been started by uh, who, someone who was at one point a teacher. Um, and he had really become a champion for sustainability in Europe by working with everyone in the community to convert the island to be 100% sustainable and, and using 100% renewable energy. So they had put wind farms throughout the island. Um, and then as a result, they had built this energy academy that was doing kind of education, outreach work. Uh, and I had the opportunity to go and work with them for a few weeks and, and you know, they let me their electric bike and I got to bike around the, the island and, and see what they were doing beyond just the renewable energy work, but they were also thinking about um, how to do like um, combined heating and power, for example, using biofuels. And, and there were a few other aspects of what they were thinking about in terms of building design. Um, and they were just kind of at the forefront of um, kind of taking interesting technology in the energy space and, and implementing it just saying we can do this as a community like everyone all these farmers who lived on this island own the renewable energy um, systems they own the windmills it was cooperatively owned so there was a lot of really interesting pieces around just working together collaboratively to get stuff implemented at that scale the quai was there because uh as part of my trip because um Strangely enough, uh, we had someone from there who had stayed with me growing up um, for about, I think like a, a year or so. And so she, she, when she found out that I was doing this uh, trip, she was like, oh, you should check out Vekwa and, and come and see, uh, you know, what we're doing. And I was like, oh, that's great. Like, I would love to learn neither here nor there. I think with, uh, you know, what was really interesting there was just seeing some of the research that they were doing. Primarily what I was looking at was um, there was a, a huge institute and a huge focus around um, timber building. So large scale timber construction. They were really a worldwide leader in that. Um, you know, again, that's something that was a lot less common 11 years ago than it was today. And it was something that's you know, been part of the Swedish kind of development ideas for a really long time. This kind of laminated timber structures and a bunch of other kind of work that folks were investigating. Um, so it was an opportunity to kind of see that process, learn about it, learn why 
and how it was being, how forestry was being managed to then be able to do that in a sustainable way. Um, you know, I also got a chance to see some of like the combined heat and power generation that was happening there using biofuels. So it was, uh, you know, an interesting opportunity to see kind of how a developed nation was thinking about their energy use and their buildings. And, um, you know, I, I know the, te the city likes to pride itself as the, the greenest city in Europe, I think is the tagline they like to use. Um, so I was seeing, you know, what that meant to them. The UAE was part of my circumnavigation because of a planned city that they had. So, so the UAE is kind of an interesting country as in the sense that they have gained all their wealth from oil and, and fossil fuels. They, however, understand that that is not going to be how they keep their wealth long term. I mean, they will for quite a while more, but after that, theoretically, they need to have something after that if they're going to continue to grow. And, you know, they're big into shipping and, and they have some ports that are really, you know, well known and, and growing. But one of the things they've also kind of made a big push into is sustainability. Um, and they uh, maybe four or five years before I was there, they announced plans for something called Mazdar City, which was a, a planned city that was going to be fully designed for sustainability in mind. It was elevated, so it was like two stories up to improve airflow for walking. Like all the buildings were designed in kind of a traditional style with a narrow, um, like narrow walking paths to keep cool, like keep everyone cool, to reduce need for AC and other things. Um, they had a whole transportation system built under it. They used these kind of like autonomous vehicles uh, and they just had a, a university there as well, um, Mazdar University that's designed to kind of support sustainability and environmental initiatives at this planned community. So while I was there, it was just kind of being built. So I was seeing what they had planned and this, you know, the cost to build this was, was billions of dollars. Um, and it's never, I will say today, it's probably never fully come to fruition, but there's pieces there that are, were really innovative at the time. Um, and it was an opportunity to see them in person, see what kind of impact they could really have on a community that wouldn't otherwise think to build this way. So Singapore was actually just kind of a stopover for me on my way to Malaysia. So I was there just for about 24 hours, 48 hours maybe. And I actually was sick during that time um, as a result of a, a stomach bug I picked up in Ecuador. Um, so I didn't do much while I was in Singapore. Um, so I didn't interact with many people there. Um, luckily I have, from a, from a personal travel standpoint, I've been there since. Um, so I've gotten to experience the, the city as a whole and, and learn more about it. But unfortunately, during my travel there, I, I didn't do it. For me, I, I already had my hostel set up. I, I knew where I was going. Luckily, I also had two really good friends who were in Singapore for the summer. So they were really helpful in making sure I got where I needed to go. And then once I got to my hostel, I frankly just slept um, and slept it off for quite some time and, and was able to wake up and see some of the, the city and, and go out and experience, you know, try some great food and, and see some of the, the main sites. But unfortunately it kind of put a damper on that trip. Um, but luckily I had, you know, good people around me and was able to kind of figure out and had a, had a good plan in place. Um, Malaysia ended up on my circumnavigator because it was an opportunity to uh, visit a, again, kind of a, a research think tank institute that was doing a lot of kind of community-based sustainability work, really focusing on livelihoods and some of uh, I was mainly in Kuala Lumpur, but uh, some of the surrounding areas. Um, and then also kind of working at a, a governmental level to try and push for uh, Malaysia-wide kind of sustainability efforts. Um, so I got to see kind of both of those uh, work really closely with. Um, I also got to work really closely with some folks that were 
very focused on like small scale organic agriculture, uh, do some interviews and work around that. Uh, and that was really interesting because it was an opportunity to see how folks in an urban environment too were thinking about how to grow their own food and think about what that might mean from a sustainability standpoint um, and think about how that might help those around them. So that kind of added a different dimension and layer uh, as you might be seeing with all of my countries there, the type, not only are the countries very different, but the types of projects were very different. Uh, and I think that was intentional because of the broad diversity of um, sustainability initiatives going on uh, and trying to understand everyone was using the term, but what does it mean kind of within my research? So over the course of my trip, I started to get frankly, uh, a little less organized with my hostels and things like that. So I was going from, uh, I forget where I was coming from, uh, but I was landing in Denmark and I'm like, oh, there's plenty of hostels in, in Copenhagen where I was, had a, like, uh, was staying for the night. And I don't need to worry about that. I'll just arrive at Copenhagen um, and, and you know, find a hostel and, and it'll be fine. Well, I arrived in Copenhagen to find out that it was like, an international or, or European fashion week. And every single hostel in the entire place pretty much was booked. And I was sitting in the airport, like, what do I do? Like, I'm trying to keep myself on budget because that was a big part of the trip, right? Is you wanna, you know, work within the bounds you're given. And, and I'm, you know, the only hotels are these hugely expensive hotels. And I'm just like, I got to calm down. I have to think it through. Let's like go on the internet at the coffee shop and like figure out my next course of action. And, and ultimately was able to kind of identify a place I could stay that was like a little more outside the city, but you know, it was fine. And, um, you know, didn't blow up my budget for the rest of the trip and, and you know, uh, ruin an experience or anything like that. So just being able to kind of like think strategically and, and think things through and, and not kind of, um, you know, lose my cool in those travel situations was a big kind of lesson learned that I think has carried beyond just traveling uh, to a lot of other walks of life or, or aspects of my life. So being part of like folks who had internet, I think probably made planning the trip a lot easier than, you know, I can't imagine doing it in the early days of, um, the Circumnavigator Award in terms of, I'm sure you're having a lot of really interesting conversations with folks who had to, you know, write letters to people or, or cold call and try and figure out how to, you know, identify folks on the ground that they could work with. And luckily, you know, we had email, we had, you know, lonelyplanet.com, you know, there's all these websites that we can find hostels and, and arrange travel. And, and that was really helpful. I think what was nice at, about it too was it made it so I could really think about not only like what is not only is there one thing that I can research in a place but what are three or four different groups or organizations that I could meet with who maybe don't all talk to each other so rather than just having like one point of contact who directs me to the people they're used to working with I was able to kind of reach out to a few different people in a in a city and meet with them and have an opportunity to kind of get different perspectives at the same time, maybe that from folks that don't all come from the same background, which I think really helped my research and, and was useful in terms of just providing different perspectives along the trip. So I continue to travel quite a bit. Um, I spent a year living in India. When I did that, I had the opportunity to travel to a number of uh, Southeast Asian countries. Um, you know, since then, my wife and I are, are frequent travelers, uh, places like Morocco, um, Iceland, Spain, Portugal, um, where else have we been together? I brought her to India to meet some of my colleagues who I used to work with, um, you know, and then more recently as a result of, you know, the pandemic, we've been seeing more of the United States and traveling more around um, to national parks and other places in the country, um, you know, trying to take, think of it as an advantage to, to take a, the opportunity to learn more about 
folks in in this country and and the nature and and you know ecological value that we have here in the U.S. At the end of my trip, I really understood uh, my research really in a different. I I really understood my research in a different way. I understood uh, when I when I started on my trip, it was really about. I initially had this one research question about how do you define sustainable development? Um, And what I realized was that was a silly question of sorts because there was such diversity there that, you know, one size, and there's such diversity in all the communities that there's, that I was in, there's really not a one size fits all model. And what I ended up doing as a result was transitioning my research to focus more on communal strategies or common strategies for implementing sustainable development. So um, I kind of had this six part framework focused on um, like, for example, like meeting people where they're at um, and and a few other concepts that were kind of broadly applicable across different project types. And, And that was how I ended up kind of defining sustainability, but in terms of the actions, not in terms of like a a two line definition. Coming back from the circumnavigator, I really had a renewed energy for the work I was doing and was able to use my research for an honors thesis as part of my undergrad. And what was really exciting was when I came back, one of my mentors and my advisor for the circumnavigator research Uh, actually, as part of my master's program, it was like a combined program, she, uh, she asked if I wanted to do this global and ecological health certificate, uh, where I would have an opportunity to actually spend the next summer going to India, and doing uh, environmental engineering work in India, in a a rural town of India. And uh, that work I would say, I, I don't know if I would have had that same trajectory had it not been for the circumnavigator. And then as a result of that work, I actually ended up taking some of that research and applying for a Fulbright scholarship where I then spent a year living in that same location in India, um, doing more robust uh, environmental engineering research on textile wastewater treatment. So for me, the Circumnavigator really took a lot of my work that was theoretical and made it really actionable and uh, resulted in me uh, kind of on this trajectory of projects um, and kind of getting on the ground floor of some really interesting research and work. Uh, after graduation, I my first, cur- my first job was actually in the carbon offset market. So I was part of a small startup team that was launching a new offset program uh, in, we were based out of Chicago, but we worked uh, coast to coast. And then our offsets were actually sold in California um, where there's a market for, for carbon offsets at the time. And after about a year of doing that work, I had the opportunity to move back to India Uh, and do a Fulbright Fellowship in India, studying wastewater treatment, um, which was an incredible experience. I was living in a small, it would still be considered a village in India, but was kind of a small town of 10,000 people. Um, So it was a unique experience. Uh, I was the only foreigner who really had visited the town. Um, I biked around. I, I I worked in a wastewater treatment plant and everyone thought that was wild. Um, so it was a really great experience to just uh, spend the year kind of learning and as a, as a Fulbright scholar. When I got back, I made a, dis- a conscious decision that I wanted to work more locally uh, and not necessarily kind of do as much international work. Uh, and I moved back to Chicago where I spent uh, about five and a half years working for a nonprofit called the Delta Institute, which focused on environmental and economic development initiatives. So there I uh, worked on everything from renewable energy on the top of the Field Museum in Chicago to uh, commercial 
still building retrofits to uh, community organizing in the Little Village neighborhood, a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood of Chicago, to um, building reuse and, and uh, like reclaiming old building materials, to uh, conservation and um, green infrastructure and infrastructure management. So a whole spectrum of uh, projects. And, and that was where I really kind of learned what I like and don't like about the work. And uh, it was a great opportunity there. And um, what was nice about being in Chicago is I got to engage with the Circumnavigators Club quite a bit and had the opportunity to do some interviewing of future Circumnavigators and serve as an assistant to the person who organized that process. So that was always a lot of fun. Um, more recently in the past few years uh, with my wife's job, we moved to back to Baltimore where I'm originally from. Um, she's a, a medical resident, so that pulled us back East. Uh, and uh, I started working at a firm that was focused on green stormwater infrastructure and uh, how to kind of implement equity-based and multi-benefit stormwater infrastructure. So think your rain garden or other project that has um, greening effects, has uh, creates jobs, can be a workforce development opportunity, um, has climate benefits, heat island reduction, a lot of other benefits as well. Um, so was doing that work for a number of years and I most recently uh, joined a new organization called the San Diego Regional Policy and Innovation Center. And we are a, a new nonprofit started by the San Diego Foundation that is focused on um, basically working on projects that are everyone's problem, but no one's responsibility within San Diego County. So think projects that are multi-jurisdictional or multi-stakeholder. So things like housing and homelessness, digital divide, climate adaptation, coastal resilience, those sorts of projects. Um, and we're, we're just in our first month, so it's, it's a new process, but it's been a, a fun experience so far in our launch and um, as we continue to grow. So the circumnavigation experience, again, taught me to have a lot of confidence in myself and kind of gave me that ability to kind of work through challenges, um, I would also say I, I learned a lot about others and kind of understanding where folks, um, kind of how to empathize and, and work with folks in a different way. I just seeing so many different cultures and experiences. Um, and I also think uh, the Circumnavigator experience has really kind of instilled in me a different kind of love of travel. So I, I definitely had that that love of, of you know, seeing a different place, going there. The difference to me now is, I think my wife always says, my favorite part is like going to the market and just sitting and, and seeing what people are, you know, what that experience is like and having those conversations with whatever vendors are there and, and learning more about kind of day-to-day -day life, that experience where, you know, there's similarities and differences and how we can learn from each other. And I, I don't think I would have had that same kind of outlook or view of how to like experience other cultures had it not been for my experience doing that as a circumnavigator. As a, as a like environmentalist, a sustainability person, I kind of went into the circumnavigator experience with the um, kind of like idealist environmental future uh, philosophy, if that makes sense, in terms of you know, I imagine a world where we're all, um, you know, where everyone has access to a, you know, a electric car and a bicycle and uh, is, you know, growing organic vegetables, etc. And what I learned throughout the trip or what I think I experienced was kind of um, in sustainability, we talk about it as there's kind of a few different parts of sustainability. There's the environmental piece the social piece, which I think those were kind of the ones I was really thinking about. And the piece I didn't have much experience in thinking about was the economic piece. Um, and, and knowing that, you know, it's really important that when designing sustainability programs and thinking about 
you know, what is that future, that ideal future? We also need to think about like, what is the economic future for the people experiencing that? And I kind of knew that, but I never really experienced it firsthand. And it really has kind of changed my philosophy on the type of environmental work I do. I do a lot more, now today I do a lot more um, economic development based sustainability work. So thinking about how do we, how do, we um, do kind of community development projects that also have an environmental focus or component. And I don't think I would have been as interested in that sort of work had it not been for my circumnavigator. Remember that it's not all about the research. Um, so I think it's really important to think about, you know, a big part of the circumnavigator. And I always like, I, you know, talk to circumnavigators about this in, when I was working with them was, you know, there is a big component of this that's about mutual understanding standing and shared learning and, and getting to know each other in different places and building in time for that is really important um, and, and saying, you know, it's okay to take a day off, you know, or two days off and, and go see someone or see a place you really want to go and, and experience that and, and make sure, obviously don't, you know, let your research go by the wayside, but I think it is important that you, you get to experience the culture and, and see that and experience that. I would just share with folks who are thinking about this or, or want to know more that it's an opportunity to travel the world and research a topic of your choice. There is nothing I have ever seen at the university level that ever lets you do something so amazing. Um, it truly is unique and there are a few students a year throughout the country who get the opportunity. So if you're at a place where you get that opportunity, it's worth giving it a shot and trying. Um, and, you know, it's an opportunity to see multiple countries on multiple content continents and do so in a way that's not only just travel, but also traveling to benefit your career and yourself as a person and really grow and learn. Um, and I, I just truly think there's not anything like it. I've never seen any kind of experience or research that it is anything close to this, um, this unique and this, that gives you this many, this, uh, this of a, doesn't give you, it gives you such a diverse opportunity to travel to so many places and see so many different things. The club's motto and, and goal of leading the world a little better than we found it, I think is the, the phrasing, right? Or something along those, uh, is to me, it's a lot, as I've said a few times now, a lot about understanding and, and kind of having those commonalities cross-culturally. And I think the Circumnavigator is a great way to see that in a short period of time and really help folks understand and empathize with folks in other communities and other backgrounds and who have had other experiences. And I think that has an impact not only on your, the way you travel, but also on the way you live your life, like every single day, in terms of how you wanna empathize with people and, and do the work. So whether it's sustainability or healthcare or um, communications or any other field, uh, you're always going to be interacting with the people and, and kind of having that experience. And, and the circumnavigator is an incredible way to kind of learn that skill in a way that's really helpful, um, no matter your background. Being part of the circumnavigators and, and the 50 year tradition, it just feels, one, I'm, I feel so honored and, and uh, thankful to have been given the opportunity to be a circumnavigator, obviously there's not, there's, it's not a huge pool of people and it, it's, it's great to be a part of it. And, you know, I'm so thankful for the way in which it helped me grow as a person in a formidable few years of my life. And I, you know, I think it, that's one of the great values of it. And I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really hopeful that this sort of experience can continue for more um, for many years to come and, and, and grow so that more people get to experience it. 
um, you know, because I think it is one of those unique opportunities that everyone should have. Well, I think it's important to invest in um, young people and, and continue to do this work um, because, you know, as a club or, or as a, an organization, we see value in kind of having a lasting impact and making sure that that impact doesn't stop with, you know, this generation of club members. Um, and the circumnavigator is a, a great way to ensure that the values that we hold dear as a club are really instilled and built for the next generation. Um, and I think that's a, a great investment that we're making as a club. And I think I would love to see that continue.